Hi, Business 110. I chose to do the company that I work for, Goddard School of Mooresville, for my compensation package analysis. Uh, now, keep in mind, these numbers are for this school specifically and not all Goddard schools, since Goddard is a franchise and pay and compensation in general are up to each individual franchise owner. To start out with, uh, I'll talk a little bit about starting pay. Starting pay is definitely not something that is set in this school for each role. It is based on what you bring to the table and what's currently going on in the building. So what you bring in as far as experience and education is going to have a large impact on the amount you get paid. When you bring experience and education into the building, that actually helps our score with the state, especially education. So you're likely going to get more pay starting out. Um, but So that depends on you. It also depends on what you ask for when you come in. So the reality is if you come in asking for $10 an hour, more than likely you're going to get what you ask for and not anything more. I'd say our starting pay varies from about $9 an hour all the way up to probably $14 an hour for the right person. So if you come in asking for 10, they're honestly probably not going to offer you 12 just based on, you know, wanting to give you more. They're going to give you a chance for. So you have to be very strategic about what you come in asking for um, in this field. Now, in some preschools there are that are corporate run, there are formulas that determine how much somebody gets paid and then it doesn't matter what you ask for. But on a lot of the franchises, what I found is that it very much so depends on what you have been asking for. Um, so that's kind of depending on you, but there are some things that depend on what's happening in the building as far as what the starting pay might be. So if you teach an age group that is in high need, for example, we are currently struggling to find two-year-old teachers. If you came to the school right now with any experience in education in two-year-olds, you'd probably get more than somebody who came in as a floater or who with experience in a nature that we didn't have a high need for. So it depends on the needs of the building. It also depends on where the average pay is in the building. So as that increases, our starting pay is going to also increase. They try to keep people fair because there's really nothing worse than the new person coming in and letting the cat out of the bag that they're making more than somebody who's been here for 10 years. That really can damage morale very quickly. So they try to balance that pretty well. Um, so again, that typically, the starting pay is going to be somewhere between $9 and $14 an hour. It's quite the range, but it really depends on what you bring to the table. Um, as far as the PTO policy, it's kind of a two-fold situation. So you don't get to use any of your PTO in the first 90 days, but you begin to accumulate it. And so you will have one week in your first year, and then you'll have two weeks after you hit your one-year anniversary you'll get two weeks a year from that point on. Um, I actually was just in a quite lengthy meeting the other day on Friday about PTO with my management team and really trying to stress the importance of offering additional PTO as people reach different milestones um, just to encourage longevity because at this point the way our PTO structure is set up you hit that one year mark you get two weeks from that point out and it doesn't increase. So there's almost no no PTO reason to continue to stay. So that was a, a big focus of our meeting the other day. Um, in addition, though, to the year, the days that you're given, you get uh, quite a few paid holidays. So right off the bat, you get the week of Christmas off, and that is all paid. So that's going to be anywhere from five to six days, depending on the year and how the calendar falls. You're also going to get six additional other paid holidays, which are Good Friday, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and then the day after Thanksgiving. So on top of the one to two weeks that you get, you also get an additional week plus for Christmas and then a week in those paid days. So there, there's quite a bit of paid time off. Um, one issue that with that, not really an issue, but one thing to consider is what is the employee has a choice over what they don't. Um, so that's the importance of having a PTO, which can be used. As long as there is coverage in the building, it can be used at any point. Um, as far as insurance, it is a small franchise company, so we do not offer health insurance. 
um, and that is a sticking point. There's very few schools, early childhood schools, in the area that do offer insurance, and the only one that I know of is a completely corporate run uh, school, which makes a difference as far as paying for health insurance from the employer side. Um, so that's definitely a drawback of working here and something that keeps a lot of people from um, seeking this field out in general now, honestly. Um, but we do offer dental and vision insurance after 90 days. Um, and then another big benefit is the child care discount. And I'll be honest, I've been in this field for 10 years and it hasn't really made a difference to me because I haven't had kids. But in looking ahead and, you know, wanting to start a family, it did influence me in coming back into the field is having half off of child care. So for your first two children, you get half off of the tuition, um, which is a substantial savings. And should definitely, if you have children, that definitely has to be included in your configuration of the compensation package and whether it's going to suit your needs or not. So there's definitely some, some pros, some cons, some areas that could probably use some work. Um, not in just this school, but in the field in general. And I think that what we're facing a problem with a lot of people not wanting to enter the early childhood field. And I think a lot of that is because there's no health insurance. And given the price of health insurance, people are going to go find a job, even if it pays less, even if it's not doing what they love, they're going to go find a job that offers health insurance. So it was interesting to just kind of sit down and really think about that. And I think it highlights some of why we're facing struggles in getting teachers in the field. So I look forward to questions and comments and seeing what everybody thinks. Thank you so much. Have a great day.